You're listening to the Big Park, the dog centric podcast that brings you the latest news from the canine world. I'm your host, Dara Burke, and each episode I meet with professionals from right across the canine industry, from pet shop owners to groomers, behavior specialists, and vets. Along the way, we catch up with dog owners to find out more about their special bonds that make a dog man's best friend. I'm joined each episode in my Barky Mad studio by my amazing dogs Bruno and Millie who between them take the meaning of the phrase good dog to a whole new level. Today we are coming to you live with a very special show from Treehe Veterinary Clinic in Limerick and joining me in the hot seat is Grace Cassidy who leads the puppy parties here at the clinic. A series of sessions designed to help you learn everything you need to know in order to care for your new puppy. From socialization to nutrition, healthcare and behavior, right down to being a responsible dog owner. Throughout the show, we're going to be meeting some of the beautiful puppies and chatting with some of the awesome dog owners down here to find out about those special bonds that they share with those puppies. So, without further delay, let's get the show started and let's meet the puppies and let's meet our co-hosts for today. The podcast that talks about everything dog related. Today we're coming to you live from Tree Veterinary Clinic in Limerick where we're finding out all about the puppy parties held here at the clinic. To do that, let's give a huge welcome to Grace Cassidy who organises the puppy parties here at the clinic. Grace, a huge welcome to the show and thanks so much for having the big bar here this evening. Thank you very much for having me and coming to see us here in Treaty Vets. Brilliant. So, Grace, tell us a bit more about you and what led you to starting the puppy parties here? So I am a veterinary nurse here in Treaty Vets. Um, I've been qualified for just over three years and I've been running puppy parties here in Treaty Vets since I started here a year ago. So I've always had kind of a big interested interest in kind of informing people about you know what they should be doing, what not to be doing. Just a little bit more information. I think a lot of people can be a bit lost when getting a new puppy and would dive into the internet, which can be quite misleading in some places so we run these puppy parties mainly for socialization and uh, just to inform owners and have a chat and answer any questions that we can brilliant and we have some adorable hill uh, little puppies running around here don't we and Chris, what topics exactly do you go over during the sessions so I mainly focus on socialisation, so I would talk owners through that, um, then would talk little bits about healthcare, nutrition, just how to be a more responsible owner, and a wee bit, you know, just cover topics that they might be interested in, a little bit on behaviour and training and that. Yeah, so a bit later on, we're all going to a bit in depth, there'll be a few questions that have been sent in to us. Uh, from different people through so, our uh, social media platforms and via email that we ask people to get in touch earlier on this week. So, tell me guys, why is it so important to get a puppy socialised at such a young age? So, you want to start from a young age to continue it throughout their lifetime. If you don't start now, I think it does really hinder a dog's life, um, especially if you know the situation might change for an owner. So, they might move. Fine. And so, when is the best time to suppose, start socialising a puppy? So, the puppy socialisation period usually is from three weeks to six months old. So, from three weeks when they're with their mother, they socialise within the litter. Once, obviously, you get puppy then, usually around eight or nine weeks, face is saying, and just continue it on um, for as long as you can, doing as much as you can within that period. Okay. And I suppose, i going to ask as well, because I think myself, this is a fantastic idea. Like, I have a, I was telling some of the guys outside, I have a bloodhound cross for a black labrador home, and I suppose he wasn't socialised at a young age. 
and he has that how do you put that bit of a um, fear of uh, nervousness of other dogs even to this day yes. and what are the negative effects of not socialising your dog at a young age well as you said the fear is there you can't really set a pup or set any dog down and explain to them this is where we're going this is who we're going to meet so getting them exposed to these things from a young age and continuing that it just helps build it up lots of like lots of different places lots of different people lots of different things and trying to continue that without their throughout their life if they're not exposed to these things and maybe are later on in life it can be very scary for them so starting at a young age is always the most ideal to do okay and i suppose what are they this is actually a question that we got in from uh listener of ours so they want to know what are the best uh, practical approaches to helping your puppy not just socialize with other dogs but other humans as well so bringing them out and about as much as you can so if you're going for a walk bringing them with you if you're going in the car bringing them with you to out to parks where you're going to meet a lot of different people a lot of different dogs bringing them in here where you know this might be considered quite a scary place bringing them in like tonight where they're just playing they're not here to get anything bad done but um, meeting different people some puppies might not be brought up around children so that can be quite scary them, for them meeting new children so trying to get them to as many different situations as you possibly can is usually the best absolutely and do you find that I suppose bringing them into like having a puppy clinic is actually held like the puppy bears held here in the clinic do you find that that takes away like some of the stigma and the fear that a lot of dogs have which actually coming into the vet? Oh, completely. With these puppies tonight, you've seen they've had no problem walking through the door. Some dogs we see, see the door and just freeze. They know where they are. But bringing them in where this is a safe place, nothing bad's going to happen. Usually up to now, they've been coming in for injections, which aren't too nice. Coming in, just have a bit of a play around for an hour and going home it's seen as a bit of a, a nicer experience I would always recommend that the owners would bring their dog in even if they're just collecting a bag of food or a worming tablet bring them in they're only in here for a couple of minutes and going home and they see that nothing bad is going to happen brilliant uh, I suppose like one question we got from uh, Hayley up in Tala who sent us this in on Instagram it's actually in relation to more the area canine uh, communicate hello <laughs> lovely dog someone say hello to you this is great Bell and buddy <laughs> <laughs> so it's more along the lines of uh, I suppose the area of can and singles and how early in life do you, do you think is that the pups actually recognise the body language of other dogs? Like you see outside there with Sonny, you see the, like the play battle that he's doing, and like even like the, I suppose the submit position that uh, Buddy was doing there. Like it's obviously very important to actually develop these uh, techniques and like allow dogs to actually learn this language mm-hmm. when they're young because like there are dogs who get older and they don't understand the body language of their own species yes. so it, it is very important oh, completely, to completely completely so with situations like this that we're constantly being around dogs so from about three weeks old as I said they start learning off their mother they then come to someone's house where there mightn't be other dogs so they kind of forget a little bit of that but coming into somewhere like this where there are a lot of different puppies that they're learning off each other they you can see here they're all playing together there's no fear in them absolutely brilliant <laughs> so, every one of them yeah, just every, everybody's just joined it? here so <laughs> you can see that they're all learning they're having a sniff they're having a play around just getting them used to other puppies for as long as possible getting them exposed as much as possible usually is the best for to help them develop the body language well, and learn their own signals yeah. their own species absolutely and um, I suppose my own kind of back when I've been in the last uh, couple of years is I'm kind of going more into the role of canine psychology myself right. and a lot of like kind of the whole area of like can and females, canine communication that's kind of one of my passions as well mm-hmm. so like seeing like how they're all interacting outside the internet it's just it, it's wonderful to see yeah, it, it is it is lovely that like puppies splash here like little Freddy there completely timid just hiding under the chair by the end of the session he was out among the others today he's running around with the rest of them like nothing nothing ever mm. happened lovely and we have another question here from Rachel in Ballycommon back to order uh, 
um, Rachel says, very similar to what would happen with uh, Bruno. Uh, her pop is very nervous around other pop people, and she's afraid that might lead to issues like fear or aggression in later life. And just like, again, like, I'm as, like instances like this, like puppy marriage, like this socialization, it's a big thing to curb in that fear and curb in that aggression in later life. So with nervous or more timid puppies, I would always tell the owners to let the puppy do everything in their own time. Don't force them into a situation. Like this can be a little bit overwhelming for a puppy. So I would always say to the owner, you know, if they are getting a wee bit more timid, maybe walk them away in a different area. Let them come out at their own time. Don't just throw them in the middle of the puppies or drag them through or throw them on someone's knee. Can be very scary for a puppy. So just letting them do things in their own time. And trying to get them exposed as well, but not pushing them that it's going to be a fearful experience for them and they'll remember that then, that it can be quite tricky to deal with. So just little bits at a time, letting them come to their own terms in their own time. Yeah, absolutely. And, okay, so we... Moving on, uh, I suppose, touching on uh, nutrition. I'm hoping that someone might come in and, like... Um, so, someone might see if someone will volunteer. <laughs> and volunteer in a while. Uh, to just, it's what I love finding out as well is it's part of the purpose of the podcast is to meet dog owners and find out more about those bonds that are there that like that make a dog man his best friend like you can see it out there with all those folks you can see how happy all the owners are just watching them on playing it, it's just it's a magical bond oh, it is there. completely everybody i think the kind of role of a dog has changed so much that they've gone from just being a pet that lives outside that you feed and you walk to becoming part of the family where you know they come on holidays with you they do everything with you you kind of plan your day around them as well so i think that has drastically changed in the last couple of years that they are definitely more part of the family now absolutely and speaking now about like taking them on holidays like ireland has it has a long way to go, but it's, it's, it's definitely, definitely getting there. It's become a lot more pet friendly. It's, <laughs> you're seeing a lot of hotels, even on the limit now. The Castle Oaks, for example, is dog friendly. I believe Castle Tribe Park is dog friendly now, and you're you're seeing a, a, a gradual change. Yes, there, it's and got a long way to go, but it definitely is going yeah. in the right direction. Yeah, and like even around the city, there you're seeing a lot of like say, I suppose like pubs and restaurants, like even like the pure quarter, Cobbled Stone Joe's. Yes. Uh, they, like Mickey Martin's will just be some of the ones now. I like, all these ones that like would actually like allow dogs inside and like actually not just even allow dogs in the smoking area, but some of them actually allow, allow dogs actually in to sit next yes. to the fire, which yes. is it's great to it's see. It's nice, yeah, it is yeah. lovely, yeah, absolutely. And Grace, uh, I suppose another topic looking through the um, through the pamphlet dish, uh. Three vets had up on the page on the Facebook page. Uh, you talk me about nutrition as well, would you? Uh... Yes. So I kind of briefly go over it. I kind of talk through people, um, people through the benefits of feeding a good nutritional diet. Um, talk a little bit about you know um, incorporating treats into the diet and how not to be over treating or overfeeding them, and uh, just about you know what you should be looking out for if you're not feeding a good diet. Where then signs you can tell that it mightn't be the best for your puppy and I suppose like, you have to look at it this way that's, that's needed from a very young age oh yes uh, of course it would I suppose depend on the in some cases depend on the breed too like obviously some dogs need uh, different diet and others but yes. like how important is it to introduce a healthy diet at, at a young age so from a young age obviously they're doing most of their growing most of their development so you're wanting to get in the best nutrition that you can to them and um, to help their bone function or their bone um, growth their brain function just everything make sure it's, it's you know there from day one you don't really want them to be lacking anything from a, a young age but um, if you're feeding a good quality diet it should help support all those aspects of their growth Okay. And let me just see. Okay, so let's see. Uh, so obviously that's it, it's great insight to get as well. Like you, you want to know as well what your what your feeding your dogs to. I suppose a lot of the debate is around nowadays is 
you're looking to like sort of areas like raw feeding and like a lot of people going towards kind of that area. Um, but when you look at like some of the foods that are on the supermarket shelves, like you just you need to be careful of what you are feeding your dog too. Yes, well, we would always try and recommend you feed a good quality diet. So I personally would just tell people to say something I'm not too keen on myself. Um, there is a lot of risks to it, but um, feeding just a normal good quality puppy food from the beginning, keeping them on that if it suits them and just making sure that you know you're not kind of varying from that too much. Yeah, like it, it, it is all about balance. Like, oh, yeah, it's, exactly. like you I I'd be of the same mindset now. You, you can't just have, like, say, a raw meat diet. Like, you, you still need the, you need the other elements. You need the grain. You need, uh, like, just, you need the actual... Yeah, but there's problem. a lot of things into it. And if you're feeding most of your good quality um, uh, pet foods out there, will have everything in them, so you'll not need to be supplementing with anything else. Okay. Uh, thanks for that, Chris. And, okay, so moving on there, uh, just a bit there. And... I have a question in from Pippa on Instagram, and what would be the recommended diet for she has for an eight-month-old Maltese puppy? So, with Maltese puppies, they're a small breed, so you're probably wanting to feed something that's more um, <clears throat> more tailored to a smaller dog because they have quite small mouths. You want something with a smaller nut, so it's easier for them to chew. Um, completely up to yourself what you want to feed. It's always something we would. It's completely individual to every dog so yeah just something that's suitable for a small breed puppy usually should be fine Brilliant. okay and i'm sure pippa is listening in so hopefully pippa's listening on, <laughs> on youtube tonight and let's see so another topic that you hope then would be a responsible dog ownership yes this is a very big one in our room right now, especially with the changes that are coming, like the review of the Control of Dogs Act that took yes. place earlier there last year. And I suppose the big question people ask is why should you be a responsible dog owner? I think more question is why wouldn't you be a yeah. responsible owner? You are committing to 10 plus years with this pet, so you should be doing as much as you can to make their relatively short life compared to ours the best possible so you know simple things like keeping up with their vaccinations making sure that you have time to bring them for the exercise that they need making sure they have a safe secure home feeding them good food making sure they have fresh water it's simple things that we should be doing but unfortunately some people just yeah. don't do them but um yeah just i try to educate people on little steps like you know nutrient that would be a responsible thing to do in most scenarios and um, try to educate people on you know yeah. how to you know and enhance the life a little bit yeah it, uh, like it is a lot more than just like having a dog check having a dog license oh yeah there's like there's so much and, more and i suppose it's one of the big things that like people should be asking themselves before they actually get a puppy as well yeah. like think of the responsibility that's involved yeah oh, it is a massive massive commitment um th yeah your puppy it's going to live for a long time you're going to have it and it's your responsibility they can't just look after themselves they can't go to the yeah. cupboard and give themselves their breakfast you need to be there to do all this and bring them out for the exercise they need and care for any health problems that might arise and make sure that you're doing as much as you can for them okay fantastic all right and let me just have a quick look here so just going to move on there and we'll look at a small bit it's more a fine topic. We're actually getting through topics fairly fast this yes. evening, which is, which is pretty good. And um, we have a few questions on this. And um, let me just see. So it's more a bit of a Q and A. Okay. And so we have Ronan and Kerry. And Ronan asks, uh, "How soon should I start training my new puppy?" So as soon as possible, from day one. Once you have them, getting into those habits, getting that good kind of face laid down. <laughs> getting your training, you're getting your comeback commands, you're getting your sit, your lie down, and then, you know, lead training as well. Once they have their vaccinations, getting them out for walks, doing your lead training then. So, from as young as possible as you can, just starting that good, good routine. Yeah, I completely agree. Like, there's no point 
having a puppy and weighing about two, three months to actually do the basics around Yeah, so the basics can start at any time. Yeah. A little bit more complex, you can wait a wee while, so they're uh, yeah. more confident, but starting as soon as possible. And okay, so my next question is from Ashlyn in Leitrim. And Ashlyn says, My nine month old puppy keeps chewing everything up. She chews the socks. I, I can really uh, <laughs> commiserate with that one. Turn the table's legs. What do I do on that one with silence? So, puppies usually will chew because they're teething, they'll yeah. chew because they're bored, there can be a lot of different reasons. So I would always recommend investing in good toys. So getting your good, you know, hard rubber that they're not going to destroy. Um, giving them to them stimulation toys as well, like your clones and your um, slow feeding poles. Give them a little bit more stimulation and maybe switching your toys around as well. So taking them away, giving them back so they seem a little bit more new to them. Um, but it is a little bit hard to get trained out of them. But it usually is within that teething phase that they're going to ruin everything. So as much toys as you can, playing with them as much as you can, keeping them distracted from going at the shoes and socks and skirt and boards and whatever they might be going at. So just a distraction and plenty of stimulation there for them. I suppose there is also that element there for like a lot of dogs that the chewing, especially like of socks and shoes is that bit of separation anxiety too if like if you're not home like they're looking for something that smells like you yes that can be yeah so yeah making sure they are distracted when you are away so uh alan from balasto asked my five month old bunny's mountain dog insists on jumping through uh jumping on everybody who walks through the front door so this again will take another little bit of training so i would always recommend that get people to ignore them just okay. completely ignore, I know when a puppy jumps at you, all you want to do is rub yeah. them, but tell people, just ignore them until he settles. Um, maybe give them a command then and a treat to give them, so tell them to sit. Once they're sitting and it's doing that nicely and they're nice and calm, that's when they get a, the attention. So they know that when people come to see them, if I'm going mad all over them, I don't get any attention. Whereas if I'm sitting, waiting, I'll get rubbed then. So it takes a lot of training, a lot of persistence, but yeah. it can be especially with a big puppy like a Bernese Mountain Dog, can take a little bit Absolutely. of time, and, but um, persistence is key. Just keep on yeah. trying and telling everybody, just to ignore them when they sit and give them the attention then. And it's, I suppose it's also important to do that like, positive reinforcement is. Yes. It, work, it works wonders with, yeah, with so, hobbies especially. Yeah, once they're sitting, giving them a treat, giving them a pet. <laughs> Someone's getting a little bit vocal now. <laughs> Okay, uh, well that's all the all the questions I have for you there, uh, Grace. So I'm wondering, would anyone would like to uh, oh, we'll see pop if we in? Have volunteers. Um, Carol, what is is it's your dog? Is, no, Bella. Oh, Bella is your harness. Oh, lovely. Okay. The big one. Oh, lovely. <laughs> lots of lots of energy outside there. Yeah. And uh, what kind of breed is uh, what kind of breed is Bella? She is a uh, mastiff Labrador cross. Oh, lovely, beautiful. Hey, Bella. Uh, a, a lot of energy, so hello, Bella. Hey, girl. Hi, Bella. Hi. And what, what is she? She's 17 weeks old. Oh, oh my god, she's beautiful. <laughs> it, it's strange to see a Labrador that has like that, that bit of long hair as well. Like that comes mm. the cheese. <laughs> yeah, so funny mix. tell me, Carl, what kind of a what kind of bond have you got with Bella? Uh, do you feel that there is a strong bond? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm glad you. And so, why did you choose? Uh, like, why did you choose three? Why was there any specific reason? Or? There was no reason. I lost my. T- I had two Westies that passed away last year. Okay. I had one. She was nearly fifteen and a half, and the other was twelve and a half. Wow. Yes. That's a long life. And I said I, I wouldn't have another dog for a long time, and next minute I just realised how much of an asshole the cat was as a pet. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I was rubbing him one night and said, "Clawing," and I said, "You know what?" They're useless, is it? <laughs> I need to have a dog at my side again. So, she's not, she wasn't gotten as a replacement. Yeah, but like I, I, I can relate to that because I have um, I have a black lab cross my blood draw and we actually got uh, Bruno Olivia a couple of days after. Well, it was my dad that got uh, Bruno a couple of days after her old lab draw passed yeah. away. And it's just like, it, it, it's that comfort, it's that yeah. company that you have to like. And that and well, we moved out of the country, so we said, right, time to have yeah. a bit of a bigger. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And it was just pro chance. I kind of wanted to get a rescue dog. 
but because the house we're after buying, we're fairly limited. Right, okay. We don't have a dog run built yeah. or anything yet, so we said, right, I want to get something that has to be young. Yeah. But Anna, how do you find the um how do you find the puppy parties here? How what um, fantastic actually get yeah. used to other dogs. It's, really, it's it's really good. Like I mean watching the dogs socialise with each other outside there. She it just it just kisses my mother's two dogs off. They don't have the patience, they're not pups anymore. So one of them was one of yeah. my two dog pups. Like so one of my two my two dogs were dead puppies. They're okay. still in the family, like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, girl. That's great. Well, listen, thanks for joining me. All right, and that is nearly it for the uh, show here today. Uh, before we wrap up, we have a big back daughter show how to give, and that goes out to Belle, who is a lab sheepdog cross. It was Belle's birthday two days ago, and Belle is not only one of our awesome followers over on Instagram, but also one of the subscribers to our newsletter. Uh, Belle received a card that was sent to her dog mom Lorraine uh, Rice who's one of our followers on Instagram and that came from Bruno and Millie so happy birthday and we hope that you got spoiled though okay well if you want your dog to receive a birthday card for their birthday be sure to subscribe to our newsletter over at the big bar and that is So that is all we have for you today. Uh, big thanks to Grace for joining me today and a big thanks to all the wonderful puppies and our humans here. Great to see the socialization that goes on between the dogs and it's a fantastic thing here at Tree Veterinary Clinic. A huge shout out to John and the team here at Tree Vets for arranging this. And if you want to listen back to this episode or any of our previous episodes, you can find them on the big back .ie or barkingmad.ie. You can also find our episodes on our podcast platforms and to Spotify. That includes Apple Podcasts, Google Music, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and Podbean. And check us out directly on Spreaker. If you search for us on Spreaker, you'll find us there too. Be sure to follow us on our social media sites. We're on Twitter and Instagram as BarkingMad on the stroke.ie. And on Facebook as BarkingMad on so don't forget, if you like what you heard today, be sure to give us a thumbs up on YouTube, Apple Podcasts and Spotify, or fill out our feedback form over on the big We'll chat to you next episode. Have a good week.